Jake here, CEO and co-founder of Project Broadcast. In this video, we're going to send our first message by scheduling it through the scheduling tool of Project Broadcast. Before we get started, just remember you can always visit training.projectbroadcast.com for additional training modules on Project Broadcast. And if you have any questions about how to use Project Broadcast or get your account set up, make sure to email us at support at projectbroadcast.com. Now, in previous videos, we've already talked about consent. We've talked about how to create contacts and set up broadcast hours and your call forwarding. So we've got all the knowledge now to actually schedule our first message. I'm going to hop over to Project Broadcast, and we're going to take just a few moments and walk through the schedule in Project Broadcast and how you would schedule your first message to your list of contacts. In a previous video, we imported some test contacts into Project Broadcast, and I want to send my initial message to all the contacts I've created in Project Broadcast. If you haven't yet imported your contacts, make sure to go watch the contacts video that goes over how to create contacts through importing, manual creation, and inbound messages. In the left-hand navigation, I'm going to click on Schedule. Now, the schedule in Project Broadcast is going to show you all of your future scheduled messages from your campaigns and from your scheduled broadcast messages. If you want to view past messages that have been scheduled, you can always click the little past icon to see past messages that you may have scheduled. Now, in this account, we don't have any past scheduled messages because we're sending our very first message. I can either schedule a broadcast using the big schedule new broadcast here, but once you have items in your schedule, this button wouldn't be there. So most of the time, I just click the plus in the schedule. When you get to the scheduled broadcast, the very first thing you're going to recognize is the message composer. We've talked about this in previous videos. The message composer is in many places in Project Broadcast, scheduling a broadcast, the chat interface, creating campaigns and keyword replies. The few things that you need to just remember is that in a message, you can have up to 1,024 characters. You can also include emojis using our emoji picker. You can leverage an image and add an image to your uh, to your message that you've scheduled and you have access to Ava and I'll do a whole separate video on Ava and how you can leverage Ava to make your messages more, you know, readable or formal or expand them or, or make them shorter. There's a ton of cool things you can do with Ava. Additionally, you can click the plus and insert things like attachments or configurable forms and dynamic fields. And some of these have their own videos in part in bootcamp. And if you're unsure about, you know, one of these features and you don't see a video in bootcamp, again, there's always training modules available at training.projectbroadcast.com. So let's start our message. Now, remember, my very first message should be mostly an informational message to existing contacts. Just think about this for a moment. You've set up a Project Broadcast account. You've got a Project Broadcast phone number, and now you've imported, let's say, 100 contacts. You don't want to send 100 contacts a message that basically are offering them some type of commercial thing like a coupon or a promo. They've never had a message from this phone number. Additionally, you want to make sure you give them the opportunity to opt, to opt out of receiving messages from you. So your very first message should primarily be a message about information, meaning who you are, that this is your business phone number, and that if they don't want to receive messages, they can reply, stop, done, subscribe. So to make the message personal, I'm going to say, hey, and I'm going to insert a dynamic field, and I'm going to insert their first name. And I'm just going to write something that's purely informational. It's Jake Dempsey, or it's Jake with Project Broadcast. I wanted to shoot you a quick text to let you know this is my new business phone number. If you have any questions, always here to help. Make sure to save this number in your contacts. And then I'm probably going to say at the end something to the effect of, now remember we talked about this in a previous video, you could use the dynamic field um, for opt-out, which is under, I believe, user, and that will insert by default the text reply stop to unsubscribe. Now, Again, you may not like that very dry reply, stop, unsubscribe, and you can go into your settings. This is in a, in a separate video, 
on how you can modify the language that gets inserted um, when using the opt-out dynamic field. I'm going to just insert my own text here directly and say, if texting isn't your thing, I totally get it. You can just reply stop to not receive any future messages from me. Now, I'm going to give you a tip on this first message. Um, I don't have, actually I do have, so I'm going to go find it. Whenever you send your first message, right, you want to be personal. You want to sound like you. Your customers know your voice. And by your voice, I mean how you type, how you text. So you want to make sure it's you. So if you're a person who uses a lot of emojis in your regular conversation, make sure to insert some emojis. Now, me personally, I, I'm not a big emoji user, even when I text with customers, um, friends and family. So as you notice, I didn't put any emojis in my message. But if you're a big emoji user, you know, maybe after, hey, it's Jake with Project Broadcast, you want to find like a waving hand or something. I don't know. I'm just making this up. <laughs> or, uh, you know, something down here, you can have another emoji. I'm not great at emojis, obviously. But if you're an emoji user, make sure to include emojis. Another thing that I will tell you that is very beneficial when sending that very first message is to include a picture. You want people to know that this is really you, that this isn't a system, it's not a bot. So if you've got a picture of yourself, and I think I've got one, um, let me try to find it real quick. Uh, let's see here. There, I'm gonna put my headshot in here. I just want them to know it's really me. So I've crafted my message, I'm gonna review it. So hey, first name is Jake with Project Broadcast. Wanted to shoot you a quick text, let you know this is my new business phone number. If you have any questions, always here to help. Make sure to save this number in your contacts. If texting isn't your thing, I totally get it. Just reply stop to not receive any future messages. So let's talk about the components of the message. One, am I identifying myself? Yes, I am. Am I providing an information only part of my message? Yes, there's nothing commercial in here. I'm not asking them to buy anything or providing a promo or discount. And then I'm giving them clear call to action to stop receiving messages from me. So I've met really the, the kind of core requirements of sending this message. I like the content, I've got my image in there, so I'm good. I'm not gonna put any emojis because well, I'm just frankly not good at emojis. I look at Ava and you saw this on a previous, uh, previous video, my message strength is good. So if I look at my message strength, I don't have any opportunities listed. Um, I've used dynamic fields, I've made it personal. I don't have any you know, triggers in my message that Ava has identified. So I know my message strength is good. So I feel like it's good message. I'm gonna continue to move forward and I'm gonna add contacts to my message. Now, when I add contacts, there's a bunch of ways to add contacts. You can either select people one at a time, like I'm doing here and click add, that will add people to the message. The other way that most people schedule these larger broadcasts is they'll use tags. So they may have a tag for, in my case, new customers, January, 2024. This is a tag that we created when we imported our contacts in the previous video. Well, if I wanna send this message to all of the people I imported that have this tag, I'm gonna, let me go back and show you how I got to there. So in my scheduled broadcast, I click add contacts. I then click tag because I wanna filter my contacts by tags. And I wanna filter them by this tag, the new customer, January, 2024. I tap the check mark and I get those two customers. Now let's pretend there's a hundred people in this list. I can still, you know, select them one by one if I wanted to, but most likely you're going to see this add all and say, yeah, I want to add all contacts in this case too, all the contacts in the tag, new customers, Jane, 2024. I want to add all of those people to my broadcast. And it's going to ask me, am I sure I want to add them all? And you're adding two people. So yes, I want to confirm that. Now, once I've added people, um, I didn't need to schedule the message to go out. Now, these are just test contacts. So obviously I don't want this message to truly go out. So I'm gonna schedule this to go out later because I want you to see what it looks like in the schedule. So I'll schedule it for tomorrow and 1122 AM is fine. And I'll just click my check mark. When I save that schedule message, I see it in the list of scheduled messages that are gonna go out and it tells me it's a broadcast. So I can click on it and get the details of it. So here's the message I wrote, there's the image. Now, if I want, I can still modify this before it gets sent out. I can click the little pencil icon and, and modify the message content if I want to. 
I can see that it's going to two contacts. And if I want to modify the list of contacts, I can click the arrow here and go modify by either removing contacts by clicking the minus or adding contacts by clicking the plus to this message. And then I can see that it's scheduled to go out tomorrow at 11.22 a.m. And again, if I wanted to, I could schedule this message um, at a different date and time if I did that incorrectly. So everything looks good. I'm happy with this scheduled message. I would just leave it alone and it'll send to uh, those two contacts. Now for this particular example, I don't want this message to actually go out. So I'm gonna delete this for our demo purposes, but that's it, that's scheduling our first message. And it's important to know that whenever this time comes, February 15th to 11, Project Broadcast is not gonna send one message with two people on it. It's gonna send two individual messages. One will go to my test two contact, one will go to my test one contact, so let's just pretend there's 100 people on this broadcast. Project Broadcast would send 100 separate messages on your behalf. In a separate video, we're going to talk about the chat interface in Project Broadcast and how when you send a message to those 100 people and they respond, how do you then interact with them in a conversation? But for this video, we've scheduled that first broadcast and uh, you know they're going to get our information only message that we've identified ourselves, provided information only, and given them a clear call to action to opt out if they'd like to.